In this video, I'm going to show you how we install a shower tray, shower wall, and make it waterproof in a MAN TGE. Same as a crafter. Warning, it's a long one. We're just going to laminate the bathroom plywood um, shower wall. So my bathroom wall is pre-cut. That's 9mm lightweight ply, so there's a little bit of flex to it, but not much. But there's enough when you get into the bathroom to basically flex it against the wall and glue it into place. But obviously this sheet of laminate is, is pretty much unmanageable at this size. And if it cracks while I'm trying to glue it on, then it's going to be a disaster. So what I'm going to do is just cut it down to a couple of inches over. So So now it's just a case of making sure that is dust free and glue in the back of it. I'm going to use spray contact adhesive. It seems to work as good as the trowel on stuff. Uh, it's a lot quicker to apply. But if you get one speck of sawdust on the back of it, as you're rolling it out, you'll notice it. So. Keeping it clean is, is, is vital. What I'm doing now, I've just got the, this is the shower wall um, cut out and I'm, I've labeled it face so I, know I don't put the glue on the wrong side. And I'm just taking off any fluff off the edges before I glue it. the one benefit now of being in quite a co compact small workshop it's bloody freezing today um, and I wouldn't normally want to spray glue in sort of like less than 10 degrees but using a normal fan heater in this room <laughs> I've been able to get the temperature up a bit and I'm quite happy to sort of spray glue so we'll we'll get the get the glue out spray up both sides leave it for you know leave it for 10 minutes let it tack off a little bit and then laminate them up i'm basically going to give this two coats of glue thin as i can get it but with a decent sort of i'm going to try and give that sort of coverage but i'm going to go that way over it and then i'm going to go the other way over it after five or ten minutes and I don't really want the glue all over my floor, so. That's the laminate half glued. Now the board I need to do right to the edge. The laminate I've given myself a couple of inches, so I'm gonna to have to use just a, a a backing board here. Just coming back in 10 minutes later just to see if this is work ready for gluing up. There's still a bit of tack to that at the moment. Um, the coldness has gone, so the, um, the evaporation process has taken place. Um, if it's still wet and cold, you definitely don't want to stick it together. If this was carpet, I'd probably be happy to do it now. Um, but I'm going to leave that a little bit longer just so that my battens, when we laminate something up, obviously as soon as you touch this onto that, 
if you've never done that before. If, you, if you've done it before, it's, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if this touches that, it's not coming off. It's game over. So when the laminate is laid onto the wood, we're going to put battens all the way across it that are clean so there's no dust on them. Um, and then lay this on, make sure it's spaced, and then pull the battens out individually. So that's the shower shower wall done. I'm just going to nip round the edge of it with a just with a block sander, and once that's done, I can start thinking about putting it in the van. Okay, this is our shower wall just put in situ. It's going to be bonded to the metalwork of the wall and then pressed in with props overnight. But I just want to work out where it's going in case I need to trim any of this carpet back, um, you know, on the, on the wall. So I've made a, I've pushed it in. See, it's going to bond here and here and that's going to take that curve. But that's the amount of pressure it's going to need to take. So we'll prop it up, plenty of bond and seal across the wall, down the middle, um, and you'll see the structure as it as it evolves. But this is sort of stage one. I've got to get this in and I've got to get it vertical before anything else happens. So what I need to do, I'll make sure that this area has got a little bit of scotch. Scotch this up right to my bonding line. We're going to put some timber packers across there so we can bond here. And then the same there. And then finish off the insulation in here. difference between here and here is about six mil so what we normally do here is put a six mil um, strip in there and that'll sort of stiffen up the end same in here six mil strip we'll put another one here just because there's a bigger gap this will be a bonding area this will be a bonding area as is this and then this bottom section we're just going to pack it out um, with six mil here and here to take account of this ridge in the middle so as long as it's all flat and we're not causing the wall to bend we'll be okay all the final insulation's in i'm trying to create the flat surface to stick the shower wall to so it's going to come up here so it's going to cross a void and i want something to support it in here which is level with this beam or this raised section here so it's all about keeping it level because what I don't want to do, it's going to curve this way, but I can't afford for it to curve this way across the the width of it, if, if that's, the, that's the best way I can describe it. So it needs to go in straight. So that's a straight bit of metal, straight bit of metal or flat bit of metal. This needs supporting. So what I'm going to do now is basically... I'll do the top bits first. You can see what I'm doing. All this is in six mil birch as well, so. Obviously within a couple of mil, that six mil makes up the, the difference of the rebate on the, on the panels. So my shower wall is here. I'm just gonna come in just, just in from it. So I've got a decent, bond line. So all I'm going to do is just run. I'm not going to rely on just a couple of screws. So I'm going to put each piece in with some bond and seal. So that's in there. I'm just going to sort of back it up with a couple of uh, screws tapped in. So 
what I've done is created a relatively flat section here now so it won't be pushed out by these uh, sort of buttresses so what I'm going to do the um, shower wall will sit in there layer of bond on there layer of bond across here and here and that's going to pull it in in a flat sort of a flattish curve the bottom I need to pack out around the the base got these six mil pieces which are going to go in here just to bridge that gap That's all level now for that to go in. So I'm gonna get another tin of tin of bond and seal because we will use quite a bit. Next is the fun bit, sticking that up. So I'm gonna basically get some glue in here, a decent bead. It's a bit like putting a window in. You don't really want to have such a thin bead of um, the polyurethane adhesive that it squishes completely out because this stuff works better when there's a couple of mil of it. So I'm putting a decent bead along there. I should really just use the window gun. probably easily go through three tubes of this on this wall it's one of the sort of hidden costs of doing a conversion if you're using sort of sycophlex or bond and see i mean this stuff's you know probably minimum five six quid a tube now and sycophlex could be 10 quid a tube but we probably use three here another couple around the windows on the inside not the outside um just the the packers the floor packers we probably use six or seven tubes um, so yeah, we'll probably get through a couple of hundred quids worth of adhesive on a conversion. These two horizontal beams are the two beams that are pretty much taking all of the sort of strain because they're the wood's being pulled into them. So I'm I'm not being shy with the amount of adhesive here. I want two places here and here where it's being pulled in and pulled in properly. And partly we're relying on the strength of the wood. It's nine mil lightweight ply. It's got a one mil laminated layer onto it and then it's going to be bonded into the two dividers that are going in. So. Once it's in, it's going to be, you know, strong as an ox. So there's plenty of glue on that.
in theory, if it's level with my floor, which should be quite level, this is cut vertically, or this is cut at 90 degrees, so it should be vertical, but I will just double check. As I can't really get a square up against it, what I'm trying to do is basically just eye it off the floor. If I can if I can line it through here and it looks parallel then we'll be good. I mean at the moment I'd say it's probably two mil out that way. Um and both my line off my ceiling is telling me that and my line off the floor. I'm measuring off that rail, I've got a, a lip on this, but that's about the only thing that's parallel to the floor. So this side of it is, is, is parallel with the floor, so it's not a bad place to get an angle. I'm going to say we're no more than a mill out and you could call it one way or the other so I'm going to leave it there to dry off. I'm just going to push this in with another prop so that there's a little bit of slack taken up at that level. It's sod's law normally as you're pressing one the other one falls off so This one's pretty straight all the way across, apart from that far end, which is probably dip in about 4mm. Um, and that will cause me a problem when I'm trying to line up the ceiling, so I'm just going to put a little packer behind that. Right, that's held in place firmly, I suppose. Maybe precariously, I don't know. I'll leave it now overnight. Um, probably want to leave it at least, you know, at least 12 to 18 hours, I guess, before we start taking that off. I don't want it popping back off the wall. So next job, start cutting out some furniture. The minor CNC incident yesterday where it all went tits up, but uh, it seems to be fixed now. The CNC's a bit like me, it's a bit old and... Uh, old and crotchety. The other thing we've done now, we've basically just tweaked our scribe. So our, our CNC program is set up to take account of this scribe, but depending on the thickness of your floor, um, you know, and the ceiling, everything can, be, everything can vary by a couple of mil. So rather than just sort of whack a sheet on the table and then cut it out, we always do just a test cut just to make sure that it fits um, and make any minor alterations that, that are necessary uh, before we go into sort of a you know 200 quid sheet of wood. So that fits nicely in there. Then the same on this side, this part here does slope upwards by about four mil by the time you get to the other side of the shower. So again, same process the other side, but we've got two panels that are now cut out to form the sides of the shower. So over the next day or so, we'll put some packers on the back of here 
that'll allow us a bit more glue in area and space for a couple of screws. Our front wall, front divider for the shower is going to be bonded onto this 9mm ply. And in the past, we've basically marked this really carefully, screwed through it so as not to rely entirely on the bond, which is probably a good idea. But trying to screw into the edge of 9mm ply without coming out into the front is tricky. So what we've what we found as a way around it is basically to put packers on the back of here so then when we will glue here but screw into the packers that are glued behind so it seems to work quite well so I'm going to use a, a PU adhesive on this so it'll be rock solid and then a collection of battens And I'm gluing them. I'm gluing them end grain, so that I can screw into the cross or into the face. So I don't really want to be trying to sort of screw into the end grain. I probably say this time and time again. This is the way I do it. There's no book on how to do it. There's probably no right or wrong way. It's just something I've learned from perhaps doing it the wrong way or doing it in a way that doesn't work or gives you problems. So doing it this way will give us, you know, perhaps fewer problems. And I'm just gonna glue as many of these up, up the side as I can. Let's do the same on this side. Just stick them on the back and make sure they're slightly in board of the outer edge. Right, I'm just setting up for a bit of edge banding and it's going to be using the machine handheld this time as opposed to in our makeshift bench probably if there was two people maybe a piece that, I mean this is sort of 700 mil by 1800 mil and to be honest with you trying to balance it across a table is hard work so handheld is sort of the way to go with something like this so I've set this up, it's not exactly the most portable, I'm sure if you wanted handheld then spending the extra money on a Fez tool one would probably be worth considering, but I use it 90% of the time in the bench. So what it's got is a sort of handle that I've just attached, that sits on top of there and it's got like a nylon pad underneath so it doesn't scratch it and it's just going to feed itself along here. So what I've got to be careful not to do is exactly what's happening here. The cable's catching under the table because what's, that, what's going to happen, I'm going to be down here, that's going to go tight and then it's going to just throw all sorts of problems. So just making sure that I've got a nice run all the way down and it doesn't catch on anything, particularly the end. So you need, you probably need about a foot overlap on the table. So that's good. I'll measure out about two inches extra of edge banding. Right. So that's inch overlap at that end and an inch at that end. Now what I'm going to do is basically start it, let it take... I'm going to turn the speed down a little bit because that's I'll get me off too fast to start. So I'm going to let it catch in the rubber and then turn it off. So now it's primed, if you like, ready to go. So I'll put that on there. 
make sure that's on top of the table, not dragging in all the dust on the floor. Because they're surprisingly uh, static charged. So I'm just going to press this on and wait for it to come out and then just start feeding back with a decent amount of pressure going into the job. I could at this stage if I wanted to just turn the, the dial up, it's probably not worth it. That's done with the edge bander. Now what I've got to do, trim the two edges, round over the sides and trim it back, give it a quick scrape with a knife and a quick buff with some glue remover. And we're going to basically tuck our sheet in there, get it to the right position, mark the inside line, pull it out a little bit, drill some holes that will obviously be further back than this so that they don't you know, punch the face of this. Uh, I don't want anything to show here, not even a, if you get within a couple of mil of it, you'll end up with a, a raised bump. So <clears throat> we're going to mark that, work out a safe place for some drill holes, and then white sicker flex on the inside. Um, I'm not going to use silicon. This is going to be a bond, not just a seal. What I'm going to try and do here now, I'm just going to make sure that both of them go in and the face is parallel. So I know my ceiling has got a good straight line. Obviously the floor has got some good straight lines. So as long as we're measuring, I've already checked these with a the big square. So I know that they're within, you know, a half a degree of, of being vertical. So I'm just going to make sure that I can line them both up along the bottom and along the top before I mark the back line. So I can see on the top, both of these are in alignment. And then if I just go to the bottom, then that's perfectly parallel with my floor, which is perfectly parallel with the, the van. So I know this is a good position to put them in. So my next step now is scribe a line and that's the line that I don't want to go past. <laughs> Make sure the said line is visible. Now what I'm going to do is just work out where I can drill most of these holes won't be seen on the other side there are a couple here that will be seen and i'm just gonna all i'm gonna do on those is basically counter drill them on the other side so that i've got the ability to put a little cap of uh, laminate in when i when i'm finished i'm gonna let this ooze out a little bit and then I'm going to wipe it back on the surface. As long as you don't let it set, it's okay. If you let it set and then try and clean it off the surface, then it's not happening. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a bit of pressure from the other side 
screw them up and then I'm just going to make sure this sits um, 90 degrees with the wall until we get the front panel in. Right, that one's in and 90 degrees to the floor. All I've now got is to scrape the glue off. So all I'm going to do is just scrape as much of this out as I can with a silicon sort of scraper. And the one thing I've learned over the years of doing this is not to worry too much about where Sikaflex or Bond and Seal or anything like that gets, as long as you've got terps or preferably um, a panel wipe. We use a, it's a U-Pol fast drying panel wipe, but this just wipes it off lovely. And now when it, once the bathroom is finished, or once the shower room is finished, I'll come in then and put a, as neat a silicon seal as I can get in each corner. But for the moment, my main concern is that this has got a structural bond and a seal. So it's not going anywhere. On the gray, I could see if I've got any smears on the white, it's a bit more tricky. So. I'm just running my hand down to feel if I've got any uh, any lumps of, of of sealant anywhere. So that's the the seal. It's just nice and neat, but allows us to come in later on with silicon. Right, this morning's task is to glue and bond this. Uh, shower front with the door cut out into there so I've got pre-drilled and machined holes here which will allow me to put some uh, caps in later on we could just do it with bond I, I just wouldn't want to risk just a bond here on the end of what is uh, 13 mil lightweight ply so this works reasonably well. You can see them, but we make them as vi as invisible as you can. So, we're gonna basically put some bond and seal in there. Just debating whether to use um, gray or black. The gray is quite light. What I don't wanna do, and my brain is telling me, mix up some black with some gray to make a dark grey. <laughs> That's the kind of twat I am. <laughs> really is. My 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 brain is telling me that a dark grey would look a lot better if it it is slightly visible in here. Um and then <laughs> the other part of me is saying don't be stupid, it's gonna be a mess and you'll never get it out cleanly. So no. We'll pick black or light grey. Gone with the light grey sod it. <laughs> This is just to create, um, you know, a mechanical bond on this seal on the inside. It'll be, um, it'll be backed up with a, a silicon seal on the inside. So I'll just do one side at a time, otherwise it's just going to get messy. It's going to get messy anyway, to be honest, but there you go. Right. With this being such a thin panel on this side, it's got a tendency to want to drift out of line. So you have got to be sort of on the ball when it comes to screwing this in, because it'll creep, definitely. Same again this side now, but uh, on the inside, because we can get away with pocket screws on the inside of here down to about this point because our vanity unit covers it um, then we avoid holes on the outside and then we've got three holes on the outside edge which are basically covered by 
um, old Ree's bed. Right, clean up operation now. So, scrape, gloves, and panel wipe. It is going to show up a bit light this one. Maybe should have gone black. Yeah, that was a mistake to go grey with that. See if we can do a bit of blending. a bit better what I should have done definitely mixed up some black with some grey and then just trolled it onto the edge I've said it quite a few times with um, sort of Sikaflex or anything polyurethane like that is not being afraid to, to make a mess with it as long as what you're putting it on is waterproof then it's quite easy to, to clean it up with a panel wipe. You, know, and you probably can't pick it up on the camera there, but I've got a bit of a white line showing there, or a light grey line, so I'm just working a bit of the black into that corner. I feel like Bob Ross here. What I need is the old uh, afro. Mix it up a bit, slap it on. Just make sure you haven't got any smudges of uh, sealant anywhere. Because when it's dry, when it's dry, it's not coming off as well. <laughs> and that's the... That's the join. Then on the inside, I've basically got a little squish of sealant. It gets a bit worse there. All I'll do, I'll make sure I just scrape that back and clean it off so I can put a, a silicon bead over it. This is the shower hole, or the, sh the yeah, the waste hole. So it's totally sealed with sealant all the way in there, underneath. Um, so we can basically fit the actual plug, not the plug if you like, but the waste outlet, to the bottom of the shower tray from underneath. Screw it down from the top, but basically it's completely removable. So if you've ever got a problem with it, need to detach it, need to change it, it can be done without dislodging the shower tray. The shower tray, it's awkward in here to film really, but the shower tray is gonna be siliconed down to the floor just to provide a decent base. I'm gonna leave it with some batteries in it overnight. This edge has been measured to give us the correct, rate, um, the correct support. So I'm basically gonna put some white uh, bond and seal which is effectively Sikaflex um, along there sit the shower tray onto it clean up the excess whilst it's wet and then leave it overnight um, this rail here does raise up by about 8 mil towards the back edge it's just to give a little bit of runoff provided you've actually parked totally on the flat um, so that's our uh, shower tray setup at the back of the um, obviously hot and cold water coming from the boiler which is this side and then we've got two mains cables running along the top 
I didn't have enough room to properly P clip it, so I've in improvised with on the top. It's basically um, cable tied to the other one, and then I've screwed it at the top. So I've got two two attached to each other. But it's not going anywhere. Um, this then is the six mil cable feeding the uh, Truma heater, and then in this gap here is going to be a fifty mil pipe which runs into the garage from the heater. So hopefully everything should be ready to fit. I'm just gonna put the um, I'll put the heater pipe in. I'm gonna do one test fit uh, and then we'll come out, glob it up and come back with uh, yeah and fit it. Right, that's the heater cable. Uh, heater cable. That's the heater pipe fitted. It's basically got um, a thin silk wrap around it, which is designed for Webasto and Eberspacher pipe work. But it, it's designed to pop a pop a fix on to a sixty mil pipe. Um, so it's a bit big. So instead of cutting it back, what I've done, I've just basically overlapped it and taped it in place. It's really just there so that I don't get any heat trans or I get minimum heat transfer through to the shower tray. I don't need the shower tray getting hot. Um, and obviously it will have some sort of detrimental effect on the cold water. Well, this, the cold water that's coming up this way is only coming to the heater anyway, so it's, it doesn't matter if it gets slightly warmed up on the way there. It's on the way back that counts, so cold everywhere else is going to be is going to be fresh. And it's only where it comes from the or to the boiler will it get some sort of heat that you don't particularly want in your cold water. But I don't think it'll be detrimental, so that's fine. But yeah, so that that should be nice in there. So let's go and get the tray and have a test fit. Right, that shower tray dry fitted. Tiny little scribe to do on the back, just take a, a mill or so off, just so it sits down nicely. But otherwise, it's sitting down solid in the floor, so I've got no no rocking in it at all. I mean, this is our own fiberglass shower tray, and it is it is lovely. It's sort of probably five mil thick fiberglass, and it is solid. Not particularly light, but. I'm not responsible for making it, I just designed it. And the important thing for us when we designed it was basically to allow us to get a heater outlet to the back. So we've created this fatter lip here, which is probably, I don't know, it's probably knocking on for 100 mil in this van. And this is sort of the slightly, we made this shower, shower room slightly wider for the owner. He's a big lad. Won't mind me saying that, but uh, you know, we just added about 10 mil to the last one that we did, which doesn't sound like a lot, but every little helps, as they say. What I've done is basically put a decent bead around my ply support because it might be a couple of mil above it in certain places just because of the nature of fiberglass. So I'm going to drop that in. Hopefully it's going to sort of squish out. I can generally tell if I've got contact. And the actual shower tray, I've got a piece of four mil ply bonded to the bottom and well and truly sycophlexed into place. And I've just got some lines of clear silicon which are just going to help bond it to the floor. I mean if the shower tray ever does have to come out we've got problems but hopefully this is going to go in. The wood is stuck to the fiberglass well and truly and I need basically this to sit down on the floor and not sort of give any creaking or uh, movement whatsoever. Okay I'm actually in the shower and I'm just basically 
crowding around like an idiot. But apart from having a good old smudge up that side, I've got contact. I can see contact um, there. It's oozing out in this corner. I'm not sure if you can see that with white against white. Um, and then I'm just gonna. I can see in the gap here that I've got by the door that that's touching um, in there. There's about a two mil gap, so I'm just going to basically gun that, gun that in before I clean it up, so that there's a decent amount in there. So now I've made basically a complete mess in here. Then it really is now a case of. Get the scraping tool. I'm not trying to do any kind of silicon type seal. That comes later. This is just a seal that bonds it and is waterproof. Um, and I, I'm going to say fairly flush. So I'm going to scrape it back to a 90 degree corner and then we'll worry about um, a nice silicon seal later on. The white Sikaflex goes a little bit yellow over time so I wouldn't want to rely on that as a um, as a bathroom seal but otherwise I think you know at the moment I'm quite happy with this I'll clean it up and then have a quick quick nose around with the camera then that is now got a decent seal all the way around to then be finished off with a you know a nice sort of I would say a nice fat bead of silicon but you know a three or four mil bead so that we've got decent coverage but basically that shower tray is going nowhere <laughs> 